Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Delusional's Arcade. So in this episode, we're gonna take this Ms. Pac-Man. This has been restored. If you wanna see the link to it and the whole series, you can click on the link above. Uh, but I'm gonna finally repin this. I wanted to dedicate a whole episode to it because it's really important that you do it right. You need the right tools, you need the right pins, and you just need to know what to do. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into the episode. Okay, so I have my general tools out here. I have um, two, what looks, what appears to be at first glance to be the same thing, but they're actually not. I wanted to take them both out. You only need one of them, but I wanted to make sure that you know. Now this one here is a normal crimper that you see every day. You usually you use it on the uh, butt connectors, which are red or, you know, depending on the size, blue is a little bigger and then yellow is the biggest. Um, but these are also for quick disconnects if you're wiring a control panel or something like that and want to put that on the, you know, dot one eight seven. Um, Anyway, what it does is it just puts it in there. You kind of just put it in and it crushes it kind of together so that, you know, this one won't crush it as much because it's bigger because it's a bigger butt connector and so on. So anyway, that's what this is for. This is completely different. You do not need this on this. Not to be confused, you know, some people will put it in here or take pliers and crush it. That's really the wrong way of doing it. You're gonna need this. This is a, if you look at the teeth, they're a little different. They're kind of angled. And what that does is you put the thing inside there um, I'll show you how to do that in one second because it's a little deceiving. You think you put it in to match it for the groove. You actually put it in opposite and when this pushes it in, it curls up the top of it in order to like crimp it properly. But this is a teeth that you need. I'll put a link in the description. I have the distinction for both. It's always good to have both tools because I'm sure you'll need quick disconnects as well if you want to do like uh, micro switches and all that stuff or leaf switches, you know, for this one here. So I'll have both in there and, and I'll put the differences labeled clearly in the description below. So uh, the other thing you'll need probably just in case is a pair of needle nose pliers. Um, and of course, I love this thing. This is a vice grip, which, um, you know, it'll cut over here if you want to cut some um, wires. And then also on top, you can adjust it. So this little thing here, you can get a perfect, um, you know, strip every time where you just do that. It grabs the wire, pulls it, and you can take off the jacket without cutting into the wire. All kinds of sizes. It's awesome. Um, and then of course, uh, just in case you got side cutters, just in case you need to cut anything. Or you can just use this if you don't have those. It'll actually cut it there. So I have some sample wire here um, that I'm gonna use that you can cut and stuff. And it's, this one's I believe 22 gauge wire. Uh, it's used for like wiring control panels and stuff. And it's very similar to what the wiring is inside. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you up here real close and in depth of how to crimp it so you guys can see exactly what to do. With this tool, it's one step. Uh, there's another way to do it with another tool, which I'm not gonna get into in this video, but it's, um, you basically crimp, there's two parts of it, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, you crimp actually the sheath itself, which is the outside of the wire, and then the wire inside, so there's two crimps on it. But this thing does it all in one shot, and I'll show some close-ups so you can see what's going on with that. Uh, but mainly I wanted to talk about, for Ms. Pac-Man, this is the connector it has, it's by Amp, not to be confused with Molex. Molex and Amp are two different things. It's kind of like paper towels, uh, where one is Bounty and the other one's uh, Brawny or something like that. Uh, they're completely different. They're both paper towels, they're just different brands. However, the pins that go into these particular brands are not universal, so you gotta be careful. Um, so it does have Amp inside the, usually the Midway games and the, uh, in my case, Ms. Pac-Man. So you need these special pins. Unfortunately, these are new old stock. They don't make them anymore but you can get them through Arcade Parts and Repair. He has the new old stock stuff. These are really expensive. That's the only thing. For this thing here, I, I wanna say there's, let's see, 10, 20, 30. There's probably 100 in here, but this was 40 bucks, $39 for this thing. <laughs> and they're gold plated, but you can't get them anywhere else uh, as, as far as I know. Uh, and you do wanna do that. So if you do want to repair um, one that's in there already, you're gonna have to use amp pins the Molex ones will not fit, they will not work. If you wanna to go to Molex, you're gonna to have to actually get the Molex connector and then get the Molex pins, which look like this. These are the actual uh, Molex ones, dot one, five, six, same gauge, uh, they're just different. They don't fit in this housing right here. So these will not work with this housing, these will work. So if you have an original one and you don't, I bought this just in case, just to make it easier for myself. Uh, but you can uh, not buy this and just get the pins and you'll be fine. But if you buy these and try to make the repair, it's not gonna work unless you get the Molex version of this right here. So it's 
wanted to clarify that. I found out the hard way, so I had to buy this. It kind of stinks, but... All right, so let's go ahead. We'll get a little bit closer in here, and we'll kind of um, do like a test crimp on... Probably I'm going to use a Molex at this point, because since these are a little more expensive, and I'll kind of show you uh, what to do, um, and we can take it from there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is this is the amp, and this is the Molex. I'm just going to show you the difference between the two. They kind of look the same when it comes to the connector where it goes to the wire, but then that's when everything else changes. You can see that they're different where this has like these little things where it slips into and these are flat. So that's the main difference. So it won't fit in the housing correctly. You have to kind of get them off here. Um, you got to cut these little ends off. They come off pretty easy. So I'm just going to take this one here and just snip it off. They come off real easy. So I'm going to do that one here and then that one here. Um, and then the other one should come off, but I'm going to snip it off anyway, which is right there. Stripper here and kind of just do that. It comes right off. Pretty easy. Now, you don't want this to be too long. You can leave it like that if you want to. Uh, but you don't want it to be too long to fit into here. Because you want to crimp the white part on the first part right there. And the second part right there. So this is a little too long. And let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more. All right, so great. So I'm going to cut a little bit of that off because I feel it's too long at this point. I'm going to twist it together. And then that now should fit if I do this on here. You can see that that portion goes in there and the second portion goes there. So you want this um, beginning part, which is right here, you want that to go over the wire cover, not the wire itself. And then the other part where you see like a second one is actually going to crimp on this part right here. So uh, there is a tool where you just crimp this. You basically crimp this down like that and then you crimp it again and do the second one. But this tool, it's really cool. It actually has everything built in. So if you look at this right here, I got better lighting here now. Um, you can see right inside here, there's kind of like two layers there. There's one, you see how it's split? So you see like, uh, let's see if I can do it maybe at that angle. But you have this top portion right here, and then you have the other portion that's like split into another die. And what that does is the first one crimps that first part that I showed you that goes on the wire right here. So basically this part, and then the second part crimps this part over here on this connector. So if you look at the connector again, you have the first part and the second part. So, but you don't want to put it in like this. So you would think that, okay, I'm going to match it to put it in kind of like that. See that it matches it. You actually want to do the opposite where you turn it around. It's going to go in that way. So that's what we want to do. Um, and what you do is, the first thing you do is you load this in. So, this is it right here. You're going to kind of put it in right there like that. Just so it's opposite. Can you see that? So, once you do that, you just drop the wire right in and you make sure that the wire, the white part goes into it. If you crimp it like that, it's not going to work. You've got to put it all the way in. Yeah, it's a little stuck. I might not have the right size here. There we go. So if you look at the crimp right here, you'll see um, how it crimped the first part. So this is the part where the actual wire is right here. And then this right next to it is actually on the outside of the wire holding it in place. So this is a perfect crimp right here. So it looks like I got to use the smaller one. That's the one I have to use, 24 to 30. Um, and 18 to 22 would be bigger. So. In this case, we have a smaller wire, so it'll fits right there. And that's it. So that's a perfect crimp. I'm going to do the other side just to show you how to do it with the other connector. And I'm going to take this again, measure it. You know, I'm going to show you what happens if you make it too long, if you just leave it like that and don't cut it. It's not a big deal, um, but for perfectionists out there, you may not want to do that, but do it that way, you know. So let's put it in. Here it is. You're going to open it up. 
And again, you don't put it in that way. You want to put it opposite. So you put it like that. And then this right here, the back of it kind of pushes against it. And you get it in there. You want this to be flush on top with that. So there it is. So you hear it click, but I didn't go all the way. You see that holds it in place. So I can move it around and won't do anything. You can grab this wire right here. And then you want to put that portion inside to make sure the wire goes in. I want the white part to be right there. And I'm going to crimp down. Then you just crimp down all the way, open it, take it out. And you'll see, if you look closely, how it's on this part, which is the wire, the outside of the wire, and then the actual wire is inside on this part right here. But then you'll see like a little piece of it. Can you see it? A little piece is kind of sticking inside. Um, not a big deal. It won't affect anything because it's not going to touch anything. But for people who want it really neat, you'll want to cut it. Um, it's not that big of a deal. You could actually see more of it right here sticking out. See this right there? Because these are really tiny stuff. So it really does affect it a little bit. Anyway, it gets a little sloppy if you do that. So this one is an okay crimp. This one is actually a really much better crimp because it's nice and neat. There's no wire hanging out and it's all good. So that's it. So I would say if you were to measure it, it's probably 1 16th of an inch when it crimps. Let's see if I take this off. So if I had to do it again, I'm not going to put it all the way on the edge here like that to measure. I'm going to move it back a little bit to right there. That's about right. And that's it. It's a little smaller. And then that should work fine. Let's see. Let me try crimping another one here. Okay. So this is another one. We'll sacrifice one more just for the test purposes. <laughs> so I'm going to put that inside again. You put it in opposite. So it pushes the back of it into it and you make sure it's flush with the top. I hear the click. You're good to go. You can put it down. Um, it won't fall out. It'll be fine. And then I'm going to take this wire here. I'm going to just cut it in half so I can do another end here. And let's make it a little shorter this time. So I'm going to put it right there. All right, that looks good. Oops, we're going to take this, pop it right in there. So that the white is in and then crimp it down and that's it. it should come right out and that's a perfect crimp right there you could see the two again it's on the outside and then this part right here on the inside is on the actual wire so just to be safe we can do some continuity tests to make sure that it did everything correctly so this here and the tip should match this and it does so that means the metal is touching and you're good to go. Okay, so now that we have these crimped, I wanted to show you the differences between this one and that one. This is the Molex right here, and this is the gold-plated amp, and this is the amp connector. So uh, when you put it in, obviously you want this part to face the PCB, not this part. This is where the wire is going to go in. And when you have it facing, it's kind of like a sandwich where the PCB goes in, and then you want this portion up here, which is a smoother part. So you know, there's like a little clip there. You want the smooth part to face the actual um, edge connector, which would be here. So when you put them in, you don't want it to put it in this way because obviously that would be backwards facing up. You want it to face down. You put it in and you'll hear like a little snap. You'll see right here. There we go. So it just snapped in. That's good to go. There's one. And then the opposite one would go Let's say I have another one on the end. You would go all the way down the line here and put them all in. But I'm going to put this one in here and you would face it opposite. You should hear another snap here. Let's see. There we go. And that's it. So you can see right inside, if you look, see how they're facing each other and that would grab on either side. They may be, I don't think they're touching now. Even if they are, um, it wouldn't matter. They probably are touching. Um, but once you put the actual board inside it's going to squeeze on either end and they're not going to touch each other 
So uh, unless, you know, it's meant to like with, with five volts or whatever, but um, yeah, so that's it. They're going to go all the way down the line and you're going to want to do one at a time, replace one, crimp it, put it in. That's why it's, I'm doing everything here just really close up for you guys so you can see what's going on because when I'm in the cabinet, most likely you're not going to be able to see me doing it up close because it's kind of hairy getting in there and holding it and kind of crimping at weird angles and stuff like that. But this is how the end result you want it to be. And again, if you try putting one of these in, this is the other brand, you can see it's too huge. It will not fit. Um, so no matter what you do, it will not fit inside there. So whoever had the machine before um, kind of hacked up the power for the monitor. This is actually the power thing for the monitor where you see how they're keyed like this one is a circle and then the other one basically is like a U shape um, and then this one kind of matches it you see right there and then when you put them together they only go in one way it's fine you can't put them in backwards or anything but the other people who had it actually had different ones in there where they kind of jammed it in really hard and it you know they matched the wire colors and everything everything was fine however um, because they jammed it in so much, um, it actually has a loose connector there where it's not really uh, good. And sometimes when you shake the machine, like I was playing and I was shaking it and then like the monitor went out, I thought it killed the machine. It turned out it was just a power connector getting loose because it was kind of a little messed up. So we're going to go ahead while we're in there and we're going to crimp. We're going to go ahead and replace these. It's actually easier to do than the other ones. It's just thicker gauge wire, but it has the same connectors on there where there's two. One goes on the outside of the wire like this. And then the other one goes on the inside. They're just thicker gauge. And I believe they're, they look like this here. So they're just bigger. Uh, you have female and male version and they kind of go into each other. And we'll do that and make sure it's correct this time before I put it in. Okay, so here we have the cabinet. Um, I'm gonna take out the PCB. The problem with the wiring, um, when I bend it like this, it does all kinds of weird stuff. And I don't think it's the actual connectors. I think it's the wiring from here. So just to be safe, I have a kind of a lot of slack here, right? Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove all the connectors here and then cut um, as I go. I'm gonna cut stuff so that um, it's, you know, a few inches behind. So I know that all this here is not affected. Um, and then that way, um, you know, I can put it in there and not have to worry that, it, that that's what it is. I don't want to recrimp all these and then realize that the wire here was the problem. So first thing I'm going to do is really just take this out and just draw like a line right here. And maybe, I don't know, right there. A little dot, maybe another dot over here. The reason I'm doing that um, is I want to make sure when I'm done <laughs> that it actually reaches when I put it back. So I'm taking this off here driver here take this out and then it can easily just move it that way I just want to be careful with this all right so we'll put the board on the side put it right over here and then um so we're gonna end up chopping off, like I said, you know, this thing has a lot of play here where I can actually take it here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this here and I'm gonna figure out what I need to do, but I really wanna cut this part off if I can help it here. So I think we have that side and then maybe over here, it's gonna have to be a little short. All right, so I think I'm gonna start on this end and we'll work our way that way. Okay, so I basically made this a part side and solder side, I just stuck it on there. Um, I figured the part with the numbers on it, I don't want showing. I want that to be the solder side. And I also put them in a way that um, it's going to be facing down. I don't want to put it upside down like that to have it on there. So um, this is the way it's going to be facing. Matches that right there. And this says amp on it, by the way, you can tell. See how it says amp? Uh, that little amp symbol um, is going to signify what you have on there. So you may actually have a Molex on there if somebody already replaced it. But... If you do have this, you have to use the gold pins, the amp pins in order for it to work. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is go for broke. So um, you just gotta make sure you get the right wires. So I'm gonna cut back probably up to here. So snip it. <laughs> I know it's nerve wracking, right? Um, 
and then I'm just going to take this and crimp it. And it's still going to reach because I have plenty of play. This is where the actual thing is going to be. The connector and I'm going to take this. You want to do one at a time. Don't forget. Uh, it's very, very important. This one actually has a little piece of wire in here already. There we go. So you just take it. And twist it. And then I'm going to put my connector on. So this is it here. Make sure it's on there like that. And then take it. it comes out. Why won't it come out today? It does not want to come out. Yeah, that looks okay. So you take this and it says solder side and part side. So you want part side and you want it to be facing down. And I want it to go in that way. That's it. So that's in there. That's the first one. So you're gonna do that uh, 44 more times. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so let's do the next one together. So I'm just methodically working through. So this one here, I'm doing on the opposite side and I'm gonna cut it about the same length just to make everything consistent here. I can bend that down now. I'm gonna take this end. I'm trying to untangle it as I go as well, but it's not really happening. There we go. This will eventually get out all untangled, but so I'm going to take this one. I'm going to probably get it right there. Just getting the garbage. There we go. Twist it. Grab one of these. Stick it in there like that. And then we'll uh, have this go in. And that's it. Kind of pull it out. Sometimes it gets stuck in there like it is now. Oh, there we go. Just gotta gently remove it. It's not a big deal. Sometimes they bend slightly. And I wanna make sure that's up. Nice and springy. And then that end will go in right there because that's where I took the other one out. So it's actually good that you have the colors um, sticking out here because if you forget, you can just look at the wires. There we go, there's that click, and there it is. So let me go ahead, I'll do the rest of this. I'll do kind of a time lapse here, and then we'll uh, see where we're at.
Okay, we're down to the last wire. So, check this out. All this, <laughs> who knows if this had been broken, it was all bent up and stuff. Uh, looks pretty ratty because we've just been bending it back and measuring them. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the last one here just by measuring next to it. And there it is. Completely gone. This is the old stuff. What I'll do is I'll um, compare them in a second next to each other. You guys can see them side by side. I'm going to do another one on that one. All right. Cool. I'll arrange this later and then tie these back. Um, what I may do actually just while I have it here is just put strain leaf relief right here because all right so that's it now I can kind of do this put it on there and we'll see if it works so again somewhere along the line these were broken here. I just don't know where. Um, so hopefully this will solve our problem. If we got any crimps wrong, I can uh, always redo one or two. It's going to be a pain, but <laughs> yeah, hopefully that didn't happen. I was trying to be really careful with that. Um, okay, so this is the part side, just like that. You can see all the wiring is correct. You see the yellow over here and the yellow on the other one. So when you made them together like this and put them together, that's the difference between the two. So right now, let me just get my head in here. All right. And then, you know what, before I secure it completely, let's go ahead and, uh, well, no, I have to secure it because it's a little wobbly. I really want it to be secure here. And it's going to go somewhere around here. I think this goes right there. I'm not going to tighten them down just yet because I got to get the board in here. So now I'm going to lift it just a little bit. Get that right in there. All right, that looks good. And now my screwdriver. It's right here. nice and secure and now we can work on getting this I'm not a fan of this being that close here because I feel it'll bend the wires so I'm gonna kind of figure out what to do in a minute I'm gonna take this off so right now the part side is right here and it looks like we can put it on like this and it is super hard oh man <laughs> super hard to put on because there's just it's just new all right let's try it again sorry if I'm blocking you guys here but I really want to get it in there that looks good right there let's see if it'll let me there we go wow that's really on there all right, that'll work. 
That way the door doesn't interfere. That's on there really tight, which I'm not a fan of, but, uh, and I'll put some, some more zip ties over here once I know it's working and stuff. So let's power this thing up and see if it works. Okay, so um, I left it on this shot here because I want you guys to see what happens if I wiggle it and we can hear it. So I'm gonna go ahead and power it on. Okay, that pops on is good. That means it's getting power. The board is good. And yep, I see the opening screen for 96 in one menu. Let me actually go into Ms. Pac-Man. I'm gonna start a two player game, so it's longer. And I'm just checking the directions up, down, left, right. Let's see. Up, down, left, right. Yep. Looks like it's good. Okay, so let me go over here and do some wiggling to see if it takes care of that problem. Yep, it's working fine. Really happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tie wrap a couple more things here while it's on. That way I know if I'm moving it, it's messing it up. And it looks like it's not, so. Gives it some strain relief there. So this is it, it's all done. Um, what I'm gonna do now, I think, is, you know, I'll put this all down. Harness is kind of hanging here, but I'm gonna make sure it's all secured. I have some stuff to put that down. And then, uh, oh yes, you know what we have to do before I even turn it around? Let's go ahead and do this connector here. Okay guys, so I unplugged the machine and this here, this is the connector I was talking about. So if you look at it, <laughs> it has its key to be a circle and like that little uh, U-shaped thing there. Um, and this one here is actually has two U-shaped things. So it's totally mismatched. Does not, it's not really supposed to go in and somebody just forced it and over time the plastic kind of wore out. And because of that, this is a little loose in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. So I have a tool um, that removes these Molex connectors here. I'm gonna kind of take it out, um, pop the new one in, and I shouldn't have to crimp it, but I'm going to because I feel that um, because it was forced, it's very possible that um, the connectors just aren't as good as they should be. But I don't know, let me see. I'm gonna try doing it first and see what happens. Uh, but that's how it's supposed to be with the colors matched up, so. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so this is a Molex pin removal tool and I've had it for a long time. I actually got it through Bob Roberts <laughs> before his uh, site went down. And uh, all you have to do is kind of put it on there, push, takes it right out. So these might still be good. So this one's gonna go there and typically this one goes on here. So I'm gonna just match them up. It's the black one. Okay. I guess it made kind of a clicking sound. Okay. And now this white one is giving me trouble here. There we go. So let's put that one in there. All right, so that's in. And then we'll do the same thing over here. Sometimes these are harder to take out. They refuse to come out, which this is the case. So I'm just gonna cut these. So let's see, you got the black. Okay, so it goes in that way. It's funny how it fits in even though it's keyed. I guess because they're a little bigger. But I'm gonna go ahead and just do that where. One, two. Just gotta put it in the right way here. All right, so there's one, perfectly crimped. And then the other one, we're gonna stick on there too. All right, so that's done. Give them a tug, give them an inspection. They look good, they're touching where they're supposed to touch. And then uh, this one has to go in here, right? So we gotta make sure the black is on this side. 
and then the white is on this side. And if I have to, I'll change these out as well. Uh, but I don't think I do. We'll, we'll see. Usually these are the ones that go bad to get bent up. All right, that looks like it's good. Let me just, uh, I really want to relocate this power wire. I don't like that it's hanging like that, to be honest. I'll have to like put something on the chassis, I think right here. But for now, it's fine. All right, let's go ahead and, Oop, you know what? Let me turn it on by plugging it in. Okay, let's see what happens. Yep, I hear the monitor, it's on. Let me look in the front. And it looks good to go. Yep. This time I hit player one, so I know that button's working as well. And we're good to go. So let me go ahead and shut it off. I'm gonna move it in the row, I'm gonna cover it up. I think we're pretty much done back here. I'm just gonna connect that ground. Um, strap that's just hanging there and we'll uh, we'll see how it works okay guys so this is it it's on here's the main menu seems to be working okay and we'll just hit player one and there it is miss pac-man menu I'm gonna turn this off so we can kind of get better view here and I'll shut off the other light as well just so we can get some darkness and I'll play Miss Pac-Man. And look at that, works great. Let's see if I can center it a little better. There we go. Yep, all directions, up, down, left, right. And I'll never have to worry about it getting loose again. That thing is on there really good. Excellent. All right, so that's it. Repinning is pretty easy. You just gotta take your time. It's just uh, time consuming. Luckily, we have the magic of editing. <laughs> so I was able to uh, speed it up a little bit, but if you guys have any questions, just hit me up on Twitter. I have an account there, it's at Dell's Arcade. You can also hit me up on Instagram. I post there. Um, you guys have probably already seen, if you're subscribing and if you're following me there, you'll actually see that I posted pictures of me working on the harness before this episode was released. So, there you go. So, all right guys, don't forget to subscribe. This is a really great channel and you will see some really cool stuff from me. Again, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. And I'm glad this thing is fixed and hope you guys learned something today. See you next week. Take care.